Good morning. I'm Denise Dryden. I'm from Whitefish, Montana, and I'm a coach, an integrational coach, and I work with those who parent and those who are considering parenting, <laughs> those who are grandparents, um, pretty much those who are in uh, detailed relationships with one another. So grab your cup of tea and come on, sit down with me, because we're going to take on a pretty complex issue today. I've been, <laughs> for those of you who've done mind mapping, you can see that this thing is just like all over the place. Um, because the concept of problem solving and addicted, addicted to problem solving are two completely different concepts. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with them on a really flat third dimensional, like this is what happens in every day. And then we're going to sort of expand it and then expand it more and then expand it more until we're really talking about some core energy issues underneath problem solving. So hold on to your seats because I don't know that I've taken on something this complex before. And uh, I had to sit in front of my, my book of wisdoms for me. I've got this huge bookcase and it's pouring rain out there and it's cold and I decided I'm not gonna deal with an umbrella and go outside. I'm gonna sit right in front of my bookcase. So, are you addicted to problem solving? What does that mean? So I'm gonna start first with, um, sometimes I go, uh, whenever the program, one of the programs I work with um, has a parent retreat, I go up and work with the parents. And I was presenting Alan Seal's four levels of engagement, which is drama, situation, choice, and opportunity. And, and we're walking it through and I'm talking with the parents. And when we get to the concept of you know, this problem solving fix it mode. I had this beautiful mom sort of chime out, I think I'm addicted to problem solving. And you know, when you're doing a weekly show and you're waiting for something that's floating around, it sort of lands and you go, oh, well there it is. We're gonna talk about problem solving. So to start with is that what we have is when something happens, Maybe it's a kiddo who has a problem at school. We've got a management issue with an employee who isn't, who dropped the ball. Um, you know, just take a minute and, and find a, a, an example where you can sort of play with this, where you can play with your own ownership of this, this topic. So um, I'm going to speak to a parental issue um, only because a lot of us have teenagers or kids that challenge us. And this is a sort of a nice way to walk through it. So we have a problem that presents itself and there's just lots and lots of emotions and shame and issues around it or anger like, I can't believe you did this. I can't believe I've got to drop everything and pick it all up. Whether it's getting expelled from school, whether it's getting um, a, a report card that says all Fs, whether it's an arrest for minor in possession. Um, if we translate this over to a relational, um, a, a partner comes in and says, you know, this is an issue I'm having with you and you start that thing where you start dealing with all of the drama, right? So when the drama happens, then we go into, and these are all symptoms of something that's bigger. If these problems are coming up and these problems are surfacing, they're all symptoms that there's something much bigger going on. So the problem comes up and then we, you know, our supercharged human beings go into a problem solving mode. You know, which is, how do we deal with this? Um, and, and I'll give you an example again. As a parent, I need to go in and talk with the teachers. We need to talk with the principal. We need to look at study hours, maybe changing classes, maybe sitting down and getting um, my son or daughter into a, a, a school counselor or a therapist um, at home or take a look at medication. I mean, there's just all those things that when we're parents, when we're adults, and somebody that we're responsible for, whether it's in business management or in a home situation, presents something that needs a lot, a lot of our attention. So we shift immediately into problem solving mode. And in the United States, um, which is where we're talking from, and, and in a lot of the Western cultures, what we have is this super recognition for someone who's really good at problem solving really, really good. Like, you know, this guy can, can um, address the issue, uh, come up with a solution and fix it for us. And they make the big bucks. They make the big bonuses. They get a lot of kudos. They get a lot of attention. 
And even, you know, in my history, uh, being a mom with three kids and sort of stepping in when, when something needed some attention, whether it was a fundraiser, whether it was a child that was struggling, whether it was a school that needed um, some, some energy to, to grow, you know, I got a lot of kudos for being this super problem solver. And what I wanted to do was sort of take you through the problem solving, you, you address it, everything quiets down, and you sit back and you go, I'm very good at what I do, and the problem is solved. Until that symptom starts to bubble up again. And when it starts to bubble up again, you're like, yep, here we go again. Roll our sleeves up, and we're gonna go back into problem solving mode. So when this happens, it's a management phase. It, there's, it's symptom-based, and there's no real learning that happens. And what I wanted to do was say, say we know that, the, that something comes, a problem comes up and we shift into problem-solving mode, but here's the dilemma, is that when we go into problem-solving mode, we're addressing how much attention we get from others, how good we feel how that uh, fight or flight adrenaline kind of kicks in and we start becoming the uber super parent who can get a lot of things done at, at once. And I'm wondering if that isn't a little bit of an addiction model. And so I'm gonna use um, a, a description for addiction that's different than what, it's similar but different than what most people talk about in the form of um, addiction, which is if this is good, then more is better. And take that and apply it to anything that you know. If I get a lot of kudos for being a problem solver, bring on the problems and let me roll my sleeves up and show you what I can do. So we get kudos, we've already talked about that, but we also start to feed this side of us that needs that attention. And so the, the question is, is we limit ourselves, how, why do we limit ourselves and stay right there on that edge of problem, solution, problem, solution, problem, solution? And what happens to our children? So in this same, you know, um, uh, parent coaching scenario, what happens when we have kiddos that are ba that base all of their reaction and response to how we solve it as a parent? What happens when we go into problem solving mode and they get all the attention, right? And so attention is good whether it's, attention feels good whether it's good or bad attention, right? So when we're angry and when we're trying to figure out grades and we're trying to figure out what to do and, and, and what the issue is, the biggest concern is that we teach our children to rely on us to solve their problems. They create chaos, we step in, and they get a lot of attention and remember, attention's good or bad. So now we're going into the scenario to look for kudos, and our kid is going in looking for love. So we're stuck with this repetitive pattern within a household, within work, is what happens when an employee gets a lot of attention, good or bad, and we get a lot of kudos, you know, super bonus time, when we can solve a problem. So the issue is that we have dependency on problem solving. So that line that that we have to step over is if I know that this is a repetitive cycle and I go around on this merry-go-round every day, all day long with each child, with each employee, with each situation, how do I step off? How do I recognize that I want to kind of calm my adrenals down? I need to do something different. I need to teach my child how to manage themselves. I need to teach my employees how to manage themselves. So per the um, four levels of, of engagement with Alan Seal, what we do is we sort of step back and we say, I don't wanna keep creating this same scenario over and over again. So I'm going to imagine a role that I can take on that makes it much easier for me to deal with this. And so it's sort of like, um, Alan's um, four levels of engagement and love and logic paired together in parenting, which is how do I let them sit in it and figure out what they need to do, become maybe the counselor, the coach. You know, for me, I go into wise woman. The wise woman says, this is a repetitive pro problem, and if I don't help 
um, my child understand that they're in a cycle to get attention, then I, my role as a parent is failing. And at some point when they're 17, 18, 19, 20, and they're in their last years of high school and their beginning years of college, if we don't teach them how to get into trouble and out of trouble by themselves, then our role as a parent is lost. If we don't teach our management team how to manage with us, without us, we can never leave. And all hell breaks loose when we go on vacation. So step into choice, which is what role do I want to play to teach these human beings how to manage themselves? How do I step into choice? So if I choose to be the wise woman, and the wise woman says, sounds like you have a problem. What are you going to do about that? Using love and logic. Then I put it, I take it out of my hands, and it's no longer my issue, and I hand it back to them. And then I say, I'm here if you, if you want to use me as a sounding board. I'm here if you have some questions. But this is your problem. you got to figure this out. And it's going to tie in, of course, to all of those attachment pieces that we have, which is if we're doing problem solving for kudos, then we're also looking over our shoulder to make sure who's watching. And when we're looking over our shoulder to see who's watching, we're also shaping everything based on success and an attachment. So what if our attachment is that this kiddo has to graduate from high school on track to go to high school, to go to college with his peers. Who said that that was even part of the plan? That might be your plan. And you might be problem solving and fixing things to get it into that point. But what if that isn't real? What if that isn't what is meant to happen? So then the next part, after choice and after we assume a role, and we step back and we start to look at all the balls in the ears and the patterns and the systems, is we start to look at the spaces in between, which is, you know what? He does actually just fine by himself. Whenever I get in and start asking questions, he starts rocking. And so the question is, what wants to happen here? And when we're looking at what wants to happen here, you can see the little stories, the little pieces of somebody who's, who's silently in the background doing work in your management team. And you get to sort of bring them forward and empower them. You get to shift and move energy around until it's lined up with something that's moving forward in the direction it's meant to go. So when we're talking about addiction to problem solving, we're looking at our own personal need for attention, how we develop attention within our teams to need us and to be actually afraid to do it by themselves without us. And, and we sort of cripple the whole system. So coming at it from a third dimension, it's just a cyclical problem. Coming at it from a bigger perspective is that there's something else going on here. Coming at it from a quantum is that every time I step in and become the problem solver, I cripple those people in my life from becoming their own advocate and their own problem solver. So it, it gets really big. So this is the kind of stuff I work with all the time. Um, again, I'm Denise Dryden. Uh, you, can, you can find me on the web at denisedrydencoaching.com. And I would love to hear your comments. And these videos are posted on there so you can watch them. You can also watch them over and over again on Facebook if you're interested. So have a fabulous um, Halloween weekend. And this is the Scorpio New Moon. So the Scorpio New Moon is asking us to find out what it is we want to work on. So let's work on problem solving for today. Have a good one. Bye-bye.